I'm working with a student on the minuet and trio of Mozart, and you know, this is, uh, you can hear the opera through this. You can hear almost duets between a soprano and a tenor, and there's a lot of tenths. There is a trio section that uh, you would add another voice, or if you're thinking in terms of strings, you could think of a violin at the top, a cello at the bottom, maybe a um, viola in the middle. Um, so he scores it basically for two voices, and he has a lot of parallel tenths. He not only plays on these parallel tenths, but he has rhythmic um, kinds of variations that uh, create a kind of um, manipulation of three-quarter time in terms of where you're stressing the phrasing of three-quarter. And that's very interesting and very sophisticated. It's one, two, three, oh, one, two, three, one. the triplet to the quarter and see if I could make it, you know, fit into a stretched beat. So at the very beginning, it's important to articulate the way, phrase the way you've decided to do, and in the Mozartian uh, language. So right away we have the parallel tense. Lift, 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 connect, abajator, forward. Answer sequence down, lots of sequences. Now, now he's playing with the rhythm a little. Now he comes back soft. Lean last, wrist forward. Parallel tense, lean last. charmingly done. It's in this joyful G major. Now he goes into the more darker sense of um, A minor, leading in with a diminished chord, but he's still following the rhythm of the beginning, the germ cell of that. He hasn't forgotten that, but he's now going into A minor. So you do the same phrasing with your hands. Slur to there, separate connect. Is now and goes into C major. So far he's gone G major, A minor, back to G major. Now C major, which would be considered the subdominant key of G major. If you go up four chords in G major, you get to the C major chord. He goes into that key for a, um, a moment. So C major takes away the F sharp, at least for the first line. It's going to come back toward the end of this section. This is a bigger section. It's a bigger scoring. It's big, more voicing of three voices, so it makes sense. But you're still playing on this rhythm. Eighth, eighth, quarter, 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 lean, last. Comes back still here, but in three voices. Sequence. He loves sequences. And this is interesting. This is like you hear a coloratura soprano rippling through this. Little sixteenth notes coming down in steps. Between the hands, there's a duet in tenths. And it's very charming. Sequence again. These sequences are amazing in this piece because he likes to say something on one level and then he steps down and says it again. That's a sequence. He could also step up, but he's mostly stepping down. So this first sequence of the little scale in tenths, step down in by the way, gotten back to G major, put the F sharp back. So the cadence is back in the home key. When he goes back to C major, sequence, the later sequences. Now this wonderful.
beautiful section. Now, it's never abandoned that initial rhythm that was eighth, eighth, quarter, 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 and you're still doing your slur to there, lift, lift, slur. Or those are appoggiaturas. Appoggiatura can go up from the beginning, the upper neighbor falling down into the harmony. You have a little passing dissonance. Now in this section, now he's going into still another key, but he's still keeping the minuet rhythm that he had, the germ cell, which is eighth, eighth, quarter. Now he's going to D minor, so it's a little bit sad again. And he still has the three voices here, which is a bigger scoring than the beginning. Back to the duet, intense. and introduces triplets and stuff, which diverges from this very redundant eighth, eighth, quarter, quarter, quarter. It creates a wonderful rhythmic manipulation that has, is very charmingly played out in this, and it has to be, you have to be aware of that when you play. <laughs> 